so welcome. <laughs> so awkward. Like talk upwards to a, to a thing. Okay, so I'm going to be giving you guys a demonstration of a somatic bodywork practice. This is not a full on somatic session. Rather, I'm going to be um, breaking up the concepts that I was explaining earlier in the video and demonstrating what I mean by those concepts to the best of my ability. So here we go. We have lovely Megan helping us out today. <clears throat> So let's see, what do I want to start with? Okay. Um, okay, so just go ahead and scan your body, Megan. Close your eyes. And just notice the weight of your body on the table. <clears throat> and go ahead and imagine a plumb line going from the center of your head all the way down out through your pelvic floor, dividing the body into right and left Halves. And just go ahead and scan the right side of your body, starting with the side of the right head, the right ear, and behind the right shoulder, the whole right arm. And down the right rib cage into the right pelvis, the right leg, the right calf, the right ankle. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the left side, comparing how the left side feels with the right side. And I'm moving relatively quickly, just for the purposes of this video. <clears throat> Just get a really good sense of how you're feeling on the table. So this is the beginning of, uh, my head is totally cut off in this one. This is the beginning of kind of demonstrating how I'm using my voice to teach. I can um, oftentimes guide people into a little meditation at the beginning of a session. Um, I oftentimes have people walk back and forth down the hallway to get a sense of how they're feeling in their bodies as they're walking. Um, I might also do something similar while they're standing. Um, using my voice is such a key and potent tool in somatic body work. It really helps people dive in and tune into different areas in their body and their psyche. So I'll be continuing to use my voice throughout this uh, little video demonstration. Um, so let's go, in, go ahead and move into demonstrating just how I might do a little mini lesson on the table. So um, Megan, go ahead and bring both of your knees bent with your feet underneath your knees. Good, and let's just go through a really simple and basic um, somatic exercise called arch and flatten or seahorse, um, according to Sandra, my teacher. So I think, I don't know if we've done this before. <laughs> so, okay, all you're gonna do is when you inhale, bring your belly button up towards the ceiling. You're gonna arch and bring the tailbone kind of more into the table, digging it down, and your low back is gonna lift up. So I'm gonna help you a little bit. So go ahead and take a big breath into the belly. Good, your pelvis is gonna stay on the table, and just the tailbone is gonna dig down. Good, and then when you exhale, just let everything relax down. Beautiful, awesome. Try that again, breathing in, feeling the belly button lifting up, feeling the low back. Lifting up, the tailbone arching down as you exhale, releasing and melting everything down. Good. So continuing that movement, make it really slow, easy, soft. The softer, the better. Good. And I want to bring your awareness now to your neck <laughs> and see what we can shift in your neck as you do this. So see if you, the next time you do this, can you leave the back of your neck nice and relaxed and see what happens. Good. A little more movement there. So I'm going to have my hands underneath your head and just kind of help with the idea of 
what we're looking for. So as you inhale, good, digging the tailbone in. Can you feel how if you were to totally relax the neck, then chin will move down towards the chest, good. And then as you exhale, the spine releases, the chin can release up. So just try to really keep the neck relaxed. So try that again, maybe you move less big, maybe make it really small and just try to keep the neck nice and easy. Yeah, good. Feeling the connection between the tail and the back of the head. Good. See about, I don't know if you can relax your jaw a little bit more. Let your tongue be really heavy in your mouth. Good, finding a nice, easy rhythm. Ah, there we go, good, melting the back of the neck. And we're over exaggerated. Can you feel how you're kind of resisting in the head and neck a little bit? Good, so I'm just bringing your awareness to it if you weren't already aware. So just see what you can do to help the head and neck release. This will help your neck and shoulder tension. Good. Awesome, beautiful. Okay, so mini lessons can, I mean, that's one concept that I'm talking about in my presentation, but it can look um, a million different ways, quite literally. Um, I've taken many kind of Feldenkrais uh, floor exercises and adapted them to the table. Um, and really, I just let my intuition kind of guide and and lead and so I never really know what's going to happen <laughs> until it ends up happening. Um, okay, so something else I would like to show and demonstrate is how my state affects their state. So for example, if I am say, let's see, I'm going to hold your arm here. So say I'm totally hunched over and my own shoulders are it's kind of hard to see in this angle, but really rounded. And I'm in a really like awkward and off position. <laughs> it's going to be really hard, one, to give them correct information. And it's also going to be really hard to receive information clearly if my own body is kind of twerked and strange. So it's really important as a practitioner to be aligned, to be centered, to be also checking in with my own body whenever I'm working with a certain area in their body. So if, say, they're having a lot of neck or jaw tension, if I release my own jaw and I release my own neck, it will translate through my nervous system physically and energetically into theirs and help them on whatever level, um, mostly an unconscious level, help them release the neck and jaw as well. So. That's in a nutshell, essentially, but I'm always looking to stay connected with my feet and to just have really good mindful posture. A lot of these things that I want to demonstrate are kind of hard to demonstrate. Um, it's one thing to watch and it's another thing to receive. So um, doing my best here. <laughs> um, another key thing that is going to be extremely difficult to tell anything in this video, so bear with me, but yeah, feel free to lengthen your legs. Be comfy, Megan, um, is the idea of tuning the frequency of my hands. So say, and Megan, I'm going to actually have you speak so you can tell the camera what your experience is, but um, so Carol Lessinger, my teacher in Salt Lake, who's amazing, um, introduced this concept to me. And she, she taught me about um, really tuning the energy and the frequency of my hands to match whatever it is that I'm working with in the client. So I'm not very skilled at this yet. Um, I, I know there's def different body-mind practitioners that can really uh, tap into the nerves to the lymphatic system, to the craniosacral fluids, and all the various fluids and structures of the body. 
Um, I mainly adapt at tuning into the bones and the muscles and the skin, but mainly the muscles versus the bones. So um, if I hold Megan's arm, for example, so right now I'm going to just connect with her energetically. So I'm not really going to be changing my grip a whole lot. So she's not going to feel a big uh, pressure differentiation in my touch, but First, I'm going to settle in to my own body, getting a sense of how and where I am in space. And then I'm going to just have the intention of having my energy connect with her energy. And that I'm really just trying to hold her from an energetic level. So yes, I'm holding her muscles. Yes, I'm holding her physically, but my intention is to kind of hover on the surface. So now I can have an intention without really changing anything in my body other than where my energy and attention goes to um, connect with her bones. So a good way to do this is to really um, drop the frequency of my own thoughts. So if I hum a low sound like hmm and I feel my own bones. Go ahead and see if you can relax the top of your shoulder a little bit. Good, there we go. If you, Megan, on the table, really settle into your own bones and get a good sensation of that, yeah, that will help me connect more too. So, so I'm going to be now touching her through the level of her bones. <laughs> do you feel that? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Most people can feel it. Um, see if you can drop your shoulder a little bit more. So my whole energy, my whole um, intention is just deeper. It's more grounded. Um, it's rooted. You probably, Megan, feel more supported and held on the table. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my, my energy is just streaming right through her muscles and boom, holding her bones. Now let's see if I can back it up a little bit. And we're just going to connect with the muscle. So I just maybe hum a slightly, uh, slightly higher frequency. Mm -hmm. And connect in with my own muscles. I just have the intention of, it's hard on your elbow. There we go. So just kind of halfway between energetic and bone, there's this beautiful place of muscle. Can you mm -hmm. get a sense of that? It moved outward. <laughs> Yeah, just energetically, it's, it's cool to be able to perceive that. Awesome. So that's a, a really awesome thing to play with in somatic body work. Um, specifically, if I want to, well, this is slightly different, but if I want to, say, uh, connect her ankle to her shoulder cross-laterally, I'm going to want to send that information through her bones so let's see if Megan can feel this difference here. It's also maybe hard on the table as I'm jumping all around, so I apologize. But um, okay, so I'm gonna be pressing this line of energy up through her body and trying to hit diagonally in the center of her right scapula. And in order to do this, I'm really settling into my own bones. And then sending some information, hopefully, through her own skeletal structure. Now, this would be a lot easier if we did a full-on somatic session and I was able to unwind and release things. The line, the pathway of that information that I just did would be much more clear. But Megan, did you feel anything coming up into the shoulder just blade? into my hip bone. Awesome. Cool. So let's try this again. So that's what I mean. So a lot of people... I can feel it going up into the shoulder blade, but but for a lot of people, it's true. <laughs> the line of energy will get stuck in the hips unless we do some unwinding and releasing there. Um, okay, another concept that I want to demonstrate that's probably really hard to see <laughs> is where my eyes go, my attention goes. Um, yeah, that's totally hard to demonstrate, but essentially, I don't know. I don't, I don't know 
know what I could do to demonstrate that one. <laughs> uh, can you see my eyeballs? You can't even see my head, so that's going to be a hard one. Let's skip over that. <laughs> um, okay, so pendiculation is another big concept that I use in somatic body work. Um, and it's essentially, like I was uh, talking about before, the ability for the muscles to come together consciously and then to slowly release and this helps the muscle fibers literally reset in the body. And um, I mean, you'll see this very often in cats when they get up from a nap, they'll take a long, deep stretch and basically they're pendiculating their, um, uh, it's not really stretching, but they're lengthening their muscles and then slowly letting them release. And this helps the whole system recalibrate and get a sense of um, just where the chronic tightness is what's holding, what's not holding. Um, so we just did a really good pendiculation exercise with the seahorse. Let me see if I can think of another one. Um, so yeah, go ahead and bring your knees up again. You're gonna, yeah, keep your feet underneath your knees. Good, nice and easy. So this is a, another kind of add on and a variation to that uh, arch and flatten exercise. So. <clears throat> Megan, I'm going to have you just go ahead and first press the right shoulder blade into the table. Just the right shoulder blade. The other right. Are you doing the left? I'm, yeah, I'm trying to release my... Your left before mm -hmm. you do the right. Are you chewing gum? Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just going to affect everything else. <laughs> Oh, on video. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. Okay. Um, yeah, so just see if you can... Actually, go ahead and bring your arm up. This will help you a little bit. So go ahead and raise your arm up. And then settle it down. If you feel how that shoulder blade is making contact with the floor. Good. So go ahead and let the arm release. So I want you to have that same sense of contact with the shoulder blade on the floor. And just squeeze your lats, so like your lateral back down and really work on kind of pressing that shoulder in. Good. So just press and release, press and release, nice and slow. So this is technically one kind of tiny act of pendiculation where you literally just contract one muscle and then slowly release it. But we're going to add on to this. Good. So go ahead and let that release. Good. And then go ahead and hike the right hip up to the right uh, ribs. So you're going to be contracting the right side. Yeah, good. And then slowly release that down. Awesome. Good. Do you notice the places where you're a little jerky? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So when we encounter jerky places and kind of stuck in uh, kind of jumpy, uh, glitchy spaces in somatic body work, go ahead, you can relax now. Um, it generally uh, means that there's been a mind-body disconnect somewhere at some point in the system. So it's super normal, super common. And it's a great, uh, somatic body work is a great way to smooth out those jumpy places, thus creating more, um, more possibility, more connectivity, and more fluidity in our movements in general. And um, generally, those jerky places are places where there's, um, I don't know if I'm repeating myself, where there's less information um, at some point in our life, we might have made an unconscious decision to not do something or hold something to protect us in a certain way. And this will show up in our, in our physiology, in our body. So as we do somatic practices, we'll start to uncover and unwind these places that are stuck and not so connected. And when we do movements that are slow and with intention, um, and full awareness, we will start to reprogram basically that area in our body. So as you practice this, it will become less jerky over time. So, okay, so now we're going to kind of put all of this together 
And you're gonna take what we did before with the seahorse, bring the belly button up, kind of the other way, good. So lift the low back up a little bit, good. So you're gonna keep that movement now, hike the right hip up, good. Now press the shoulder blade into the ground. So you should really feel the whole right mm -hmm. back contracting. So this is step one of pendiculation. So now as you exhale, slowly let everything melt back to the table, good. Awesome, let's do that again. So inhaling, digging the tailbone down, hiking the hip up, pressing the shoulder in. Good, notice what wants to happen with the head and neck. So it's okay, whatever happens, happens. Just, just notice what's happening and slowly let it release. Good, see if you can do everything now together. Maybe, maybe not, just. And I want you to very slowly, consciously, with the exhales, melt all of the muscles equally down into the table. Yeah, good. Good. Awesome, good. And then go ahead and take a rest, let your legs fall long on the table, and just do another little body scan. So I'm doing a ton of talking right now. <laughs> I normally do not talk this much in a somatic bodywork session. <coughs> good, do you notice anything? What do you notice? I notice my right side feels more alive at the moment. <laughs> or more alive. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So that's another um, awesome piece with, with somatic awareness and practices is that we start to wake up certain areas of our body that we've never really been connected with consciously. And so when we bring the awareness to a certain part and we start to move it, we oftentimes have the sensation of, wow. I can actually like now connect with this and it feels more alive. Maybe it's more tingly. Oftentimes that area of the body feels way more relaxed. Um, they're working it. Good. Okay. So that's the general idea of pendiculation. There's tons of ways that we can use this. For example, let's just do another one real quick. I don't know if you can see. So we're going to lift this arm up. Make sure. I'm... Okay, good. So you're just going to inhale the arm straight up to the ceiling. And then you're going to let the arm drop down. Good. Super simple. Go ahead and inhale the arm back up. Maybe there's a little rotation in with the arm this time. Good. And then dropping slowly back down. And I'm going to push down so you can feel the shoulder blade connection. Good. And again, inhaling, spiraling up. Oh, that just got a little easier. Good. Exhaling, lowering down. Good. This next time, I want you, Megan, to purposely roll your head to the right, but try to make it as easy as you can. So when we inhale, let the head go. Let the wrist rotate in. And then exhaling, unwinding. Good. This time, see if you can not force your head to turn to the right, but just kind of let it fall as much as it wants to. So we're going to inhale. See if you can rotate the wrist a little more. Yeah, good. Ah. Beautiful. Good. And then we'll give that a rest. And just notice what you notice on that shoulder. Good. So, pendiculation, it's a great thing to use in somatic body work. So, the next point I want to demonstrate is the idea of rocking. So, first, before I get 